time to re-up YouTube, your boy Young Mustard is back with another video. When I tell you guys yesterday was a pretty fun day as an NBA fan, not only because the Nuggets got a solid victory over the Lakers, but the draft lottery was amazing for me. It wasn't perfect by any means, I'm a Houston guy, so I'm gonna be rooting for Wimbiyama to come to Houston so I could watch those games in person. But the second best option was for him to go to San Antonio, and that's exactly what happened as the San Antonio Spurs won the draft lottery and secured the first overall pick. Now you guys know, I don't always talk about draft stuff because I don't watch many prospects. But in the case of this draft in particular, it's kind of hard to not pay attention to Wembyama, Scoot Henderson, the Thompson Twins, and a couple of other guys like Brandon Miller and etc. And I'm not saying I'm a scout expert, you guys know that's not my thing. Around draft time, I'll probably drop a mock draft and look into it more. But over the course of the college season, I'm not watching it religiously until March Madness comes and best believe I'm not watching like the overtime league of the Thompson twins every single game. But in the case of Wembyama, I have been paying a lot of attention to him over the last couple of months in preparation for this draft lottery and my reaction. And I have to say, I love that the San Antonio Spurs were able to land him. Not only because he's in Texas being in a drivable distance away from me, but because no other team deserves Wembyama the way the Spurs do. This is an organization that two decades ago, they had a dynasty on their hands around Tim Duncan. After their dynasty ended in 07, they were only able to get one more championship in 14, and then Tim Duncan retired. And sure, they did have Kawhi Leonard for a couple of years, but he left. They fumbled him. Whether it was his fault or the organization's fault, he was gone. And the return package for him wasn't really the best one in DeMar DeRozan and Yaka Pertle. It led to this organization being pretty mediocre for a couple of years, and now they're out the playoffs in its entirety. But for the last couple of years, I have liked some of the young talent that they they have on their roster. If you guys remember my season preview, I predicted the Spurs to be the worst team in the NBA, but in that video, I talked about the pieces that they had on the team, and I said if they were able to secure a legitimate number one guy that they could build around, then this roster could really have a lot of upside around that piece. And obviously, Wembyama is the perfect guy to do so. For those who don't know, Wembyama is a demigod. This is a guy that has an insane build that looks like a 2K player. He's listed as seven foot three and has an eight foot wingspan that alone makes him interesting as fuck but then you throw in his skill set and it just becomes godlike the defensive side of the ball is really where i think he has the most upside as this is a guy who has some lateral mobility and even if he gets beat off the dribble his length and size aids him in the recovery process it aids him as a shot blocker and rim protector and his defensive instincts are just really solid for somebody coming into the league obviously his inner core strength is lacking a little Little bit, but I don't think that he has the same concerns that someone like Chet had going into the draft last year. Because for one, Wembyama isn't as skinny and frail, he's taller also. Then you throw into the fact that Wembyama has shown the ability to actually put on weight. I mean, just look at him one year ago versus now. It's a clear difference. Now, offensively, I think that's where some people need to adjust their expectations, at least for right now. Wembyama is still a little bit raw offensively as a shot creator. He's not gonna just come into the league and be Kevin Durant from day one. I mean, the potential potential is there definitely for him to be a great offensive player, but I think some people need to adjust their expectations just a little bit when it comes to his immediate impact there. Nonetheless though, nobody is going to be able to block that shot unless you're maybe Giannis or Chet even, and even then the guy is still 7 foot 3. There's only a couple of guys in the league that have a chance. On most nights he's going to be able to just shoot over the top of anybody. The potential is definitely there for him to be an amazing offensive talent, a generational offensive talent even, but there's definitely some some development that needs to be done before he can get there. That's all I'm trying to say. Couple him with this Spurs roster and I definitely think you have a really solid young core. Let's start with Keldon Johnson because even though he's not the youngest of the bunch, he is still their best player. Keldon was a 20 point per game scorer for the first time in his career this season. And though his numbers took a dip from the hot start that he had in the beginning of the season, he still had respectable numbers all across the box score of 22 points a game, five rebounds and three assists while shooting 45% from the field and seven 75% at the free throw line. I think Keldon is going to immediately alleviate pressure off of Wembyama, who probably would have been the number one option in a lot of other areas and mainly in San Antonio if Keldon wasn't there. And with Wembyama protecting the rim along with Sohan at the four, I definitely think that Keldon's defensive issues will probably not be as big of a deal. And that's not to say he's a horrible defender or anything, but he isn't particularly great on that side of the ball. Then you look at other young players who bring value in their own way, like Malachi Brenham, who I think was better than a lot of people expected 
offensively. Trey Jones is a solid young point guard, even though he's not that great of a floor spacer. But that's why you have a guy like Zach Collins, who has shown promise as a floor spacer in the front court. Devontae Graham, who's a really good spot up shooter. And Devin Vassell, who's also one of the better shooters in the league this year and showed a lot of promise as a scorer. I don't ever expect him to be a great scorer in this league, but he can attack some closeouts. He has some length to aid him on the defensive side of the ball to be better on that end. And to be honest, I could talk about a couple of other young guys on this team, but I think the main guy that I love the pairing of Wembyama with is Jeremy Sohan. Sohan this year showed so many flashes of potential from the beginning of the season till the end in so many different ways. Offensively, he definitely has some holes and he's pretty raw, but he is a very underrated passer and playmaker. If I could compare him to another player when it comes to his passing at the four position, I would say Draymond Green. You could run some DHO actions with him. He's a solid passer out of the post and he could push the pace in transition. His holes definitely come as a scorer and self creator. He isn't some great shooter either, but he definitely can make up for it on the defensive side of the ball because just off of his build and length alone, I think him and Wimbiyama are going to terrorize teams in the front court. Standing at six foot nine with the seven foot wingspan, he has the ability to alter shots in any way, shape or form. He can get in passing lanes with deflections. He has some lateral mobility to keep up with some players on the perimeter. And considering that he's only 19 years old, I would say that he fits the timeline with Wembyama perfectly. I truly do believe that Sohan is the most valuable piece on this team aside from Wembyama, obviously. And that's the pairing that I'm most excited about because Keldon Johnson, as good as he is, he is about 24 years old. And you could argue that they should move him in a year or two to get some more assets to further the rebuild process. And I wouldn't really be mad at that take at all because I understand that this is a business. At the end of the day, Wembyama going to the Spurs is great for basketball. The Spurs have been a household name since the beginning of their existence damn near. Going back to the days of George Gervin to then David Robinson, obviously Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker, Kawhi Leonard, and now they have Victor Wembyama. Call it luck, whatever you want to say about it, I definitely think that the Spurs deserve this. This is an organization that had been mediocre for years and finally decided to tank hard this season. And with their track record and history of development in the league, Wembyama couldn't have gone to a more perfect scenario in my opinion. So shout out to the city of San Antonio. I was seeing the reaction videos. Those niggas was definitely lit and they deserve to be. I ain't gonna lie. I'll definitely be booking my trip along with Bino and Go Bells when they come out here in Houston. We will be at that first tip off game in San Antonio for the Spurs. But before we wrap up this video, I want to give you guys the question of the day like I always do. But unlike a lot of other videos, I actually kind of have two questions. The first one is, what is the ceiling for Wembyama? And the second question is, what would it take for Wembyama to be for you to say that he is a bust? You guys let me know your opinions about that down below in the comment section. Trust me, I do read them. Make sure you guys also like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Press that bell for post notifications as well. This is your boy Young Mustard signing out. You guys stay safe and have a blessed day. Peace.